OLED gaming monitors are here. They're affordable, and excuse my French, but they're an arc to triumph. I've seen a lot of PC gaming tech in my time, but it is incredibly rare to have something that is just so groundbreaking and is a complete game changer for PC gaming in every sense of the word. Is this thing perfect? Well, no, not quite. As you'd probably expect, there are a couple of niggling features that stop this from having a clean sheet. But honestly, for all intents and purposes, this is one godlike PC gaming monitor that puts all others to shame. Find out why after a short word from this video sponsor. Turn heads with the remarkable Corsair IQ 5000T RGB. With 208 individually addressable RGB LEDs, three LL fans and a dedicated USB controller for both fan speed and lighting, the IQ 5000T is your surefire way to get the PC build of your dreams. It's spacious, full of airflow and incredibly easy to build in. Get yours today with the link below. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is this monitor and why is it special? Well, essentially, this is the next generation of gaming screens that at the time of filming is oceans away from everything else on the market. The reason for this is all down to the quantum dot OLED panel and it's used here in an ultra wide form factor with a resolution of 3440 by 1440. Unlike traditional panels that rely on light filters, the QD OLED panel produces large amounts of bright blue light before the quantum dots convert this into the color that you then see on screen. This means that colors can be more accurate, with a wider gamut offer that's really useful for video production or photo work, but more importantly for HDR gaming, this also results in less light loss, which gives a hugely impactful high dynamic range image that's brighter than we've seen before. It still won't be quite as bright as the very best TVs that pack a mini LED backlight in, but here's the thing, with an OLED, while well, this only goes up to 1000 nits of peak brightness, you get properly true black pixels that just look incredible. Whereas if you go for an LCD with a mini LED backlight, while it can get brighter, you're always going to have some tiny little zones of dimming that just never look quite as good as an OLED panel. There is a slight quirk on the implementation of this though, as unlike on most gaming monitors, you've actually got a semi-gloss finish to contend with here. Now, don't get me wrong, the image looks all the better for it, but on a 34-inch curved ultra-wide monitor, obviously it is going to pick up a lot of reflections if you're not careful about where you put it. It's absolutely fine for my very dark studio, but next to a window? probably a questionable choice. Obviously, the form factor of this absolutely isn't anything new, but in case you haven't tried it before, in my opinion, it's the pure sweet spot of PC gaming. Not only because it does fill your vision a little bit more, you can actually use it for gaming rather than having two screens where you'd have to pick one, but because when you compare this to 4K, it is actually a lot easier to drive. Obviously, a beefy graphics card is still absolutely required for the best performance, but I find it's ideal for all sorts of gaming, regardless of whether that's casual bits of Age of Empires or Planet Zoo, AAA monsters like Cyberpunk 2077, and even properly competitive gaming in Apex Legends. And gaming is no doubt where this thing is absolutely mega, not only because it's OLED, but also because it runs at a friggin' 175Hz. It is a proper double whammy, as the high refresh rate lowers the latency and brings you way more connected to the game than a 60Hz panel could ever dream of, but also thanks to the measly 0.1 millisecond response time of OLED, motion blur is absurdly low here. Combine that with a minuscule amount of input lag, and you've got a champion of a gaming monitor. Running around and trying to pick out subtle details in the distance does become that little bit easier, as there's much less of that horrible ghosting or smearing to contend with. It is still there if you're moving fast enough. This is only 175 hertz after all. If we were at 360, this may be a completely different story, but the motion blur that is present is massively reduced and it just looks a whole lot cleaner. This does bring us to a little bit of a bummer though, as I do need to correct a mistake that I made in my original unboxing of this, because sadly this monitor does not support, support. It definitely doesn't support anything. This monitor does not support display stream compression, which means if you want to use this in full 10-bit color, you have to use this at 144 hertz or lower. If you set this to 175, it will go to 8-bit with dithering. That I don't think is going to be noticeable to anybody. Obviously, if you're creative, you can just drop this down to 120 anyway. It's divisible by 60. That's what I personally would use. I don't think it's an issue, but obviously, technically speaking, it is a limitation with this display, and it must be reported or applauded. 
Speaking of 10-bit color, it's probably time to move on to the high dynamic range section of this review. And it is definitely an interesting one because there are actually two modes you can choose from on this display. You've got HDR 400 True Black that's properly certified, and then an unofficial HDR 1000. There's a toggle that you can use within the monitor menu system that does this on the fly. You're not going to have to close your games to cycle between the two. And it does appear that all it does really is change the tone mapping and the way that brightness is displayed on the actual display. Both modes do get extremely punchy, way more than you'd expect from an OLED, which I guess is the point of QD OLED, but HDR 1000 definitely seems to give you a lot more detail in the bright highlights. I would actually go as far to say that Cyberpunk in the 1000 mode looks the best that I've ever seen this game, absolutely hands down, as the contrast, the colour volume and the brights just look absolutely mesmerising. Again, it isn't the absolute brightest image that I've ever seen, but as every pixel is the exact colour and brightness that it's supposed to be, the image is just staggeringly good. It is a properly perfect image, and as sad as this may seem to some people, I actually got a little bit emotional the first time I booted this up and saw some HDR content on it, because this is what the next generation of PC gaming is supposed to be. None of this monitor that supports HDR but ends up looking crap. You turn this on, and it's a winner. I just need some support, I've been looking at this monitor all day and it's amazing! Did you know, by the way, that this filming equipment actually makes me psychic? Because I can hear you through the camera equipment, and clearly you're screaming at the display. Well, what about OLED burn-in? Surely this thing is only going to last a little bit and then you're going to have horrible smeariness and image retention and it's going to be a terrible idea. Is it a problem? And truth be told, I don't really think any reviewer can tell you this properly at the moment because this is only going to happen after months, if not hopefully years of use. And interestingly, Alienware do actually give you a proper guarantee against burn-in for three years, which does show that they are very confident that this isn't going to be an issue, but if you're worried about it, there is actually a baked in pixel refresher that runs when you turn this monitor off. It really annoyed me, it says it's only going to take a few minutes, it actually takes about 10-15. I got caught out, and as you can see, it got me quite annoyed. But anyway, if you are worried about this, you can always use this at lower brightness levels, and I would argue that it's not really any different to using this as a TV if you are a PC gamer. If you're a creator, then this is something that would probably worry me a little bit more, but ultimately you do have that warranty and I assure you I will be using this for a prolonged period of time and if any issues pop up, I will be sure to tell you about them. The other question that people have been hurling at me across the comment section is what about the fan? I've heard some people complain about this. Is it really loud? Is it obnoxious? Well, I was someone that really got very peed off when, what was it, the PG27UQ and Aces X27 first came out, because in my opinion, the fans in that were just too loud to use, I would have sent the monitor back. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty loud. I know they sort of patched it, but the fact of the matter is, those monitors produced a lot of heat and needed a good cooling system, this does have a very slight whine, and it is on most of the time, but it's just so low. It's a tiny little hum in the distance that unless you have a completely silent room, you're not going to hear it, and even when you can hear it, it's not annoying. It's not like a high-pitched whine. Not going to be an issue. Clearly, there is a lot of capability in this display, with 99% of DCI-P3 and 94% of Adobe RGB covered in my tests, but you should be aware that it did need some calibration to get it looking the most accurate. There is also a creator's sRGB mode, but it didn't seem to quite cover the full sRGB color space, which I thought was perhaps a little bit odd. There's also proper G-Sync capability baked into this, which as usual works a treat at reducing the stutter and tearing that you're going to see in games. There's plenty of adjustments to the very sturdy stand, including height adjust, swivel, and even a little bit of angle pivot. And then in terms of inputs, there's the display port that you're going to want to use, and then HDMI 2.0 ports, not 2.1, that are probably going to be used for console expansion. So if you've got an Xbox, this is probably fine, but PlayStation users note you're going to be limited really to 1080p. You should also be aware that there aren't any baked in speakers, which probably isn't going to be a big deal for most, but it is definitely something to bear in mind. So yes, there definitely are a few little niggling points with this that will stop this from being the perfect monitor, but there's not really anything that would stop me from recommending this to you, besides the obvious, which is the price. This comes in at £1,100, which is a lot of money. I think it's reasonable for what we have here. It's the first of its kind, and when you think you've got other gaming monitors that are more expensive than this, you can get 32-inch 4K ASUS monitors for over three grand. Somehow, this actually seems very reasonable, but that doesn't stop 
this from being very expensive. And if you do want a brilliant gaming experience, you can get brilliant gaming displays that are 1440p, 165 hertz, for like three to 400 pounds. There are also other brilliant monitors that are better than this in certain respects like 360 hertz monitors for the proper true esports nuts, higher res ultra wides for video editors, and of course full size OLED TVs for fans of big ass screens. But I don't think that any of those are as good as the Alienware. It's bright, it's fast, it's responsive, and it is drop dead gorgeous. The Alienware QD OLED monitor is the best gaming monitor on the planet. If you do want to check out current pricing on this monitor and a load of others that I recommend, then as always you can find them linked down below with my Amazon affiliate links. But smash the like button if you've enjoyed this video, it really helps out you wouldn't believe. Get subscribed so you don't miss more like this, and let me know your thoughts on this display. Do you think OLED is the future, or are you too worried about burning? I'd love to hear from you, so let me know down in that comment section below. And while you're down there, why not bask in the glorious RGB lighting of the Corsair IQ 5000T RGB. Built to accommodate the most hardcore gaming rigs, this fully airflow orientated case supports up to 10 fans for masses of cooling potential and is perfect for the latest graphics cards and power hungry processors. Get your build on today with that link down below. Thank you so much for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.